Hey, it's Daphne, and we are working on Sonora, and I am gonna start on the cover right now. So I just wanna share with you that I used the black construction tape around the edge, and that I'm trying something new where I apply the black construction tape to a piece of white um, copy paper. And so my hinge is actually made out of the black construction tape too. And I'll keep you posted on how that holds up over time. But I just wanted to share that with you. I don't have a video for um, applying the black construction tape, but if you go to uh, My Creative Spirit, um, Claire Cheval has um, a tutorial on how to apply it to your edges. Um, and then the measurements for this are eight and a half by eight and a half with a two and a half by eight and a half inch spine, which is the typical uh, size that I normally do. Um, and if you don't have the black construction tape, just go back to the eight and a half by eight and a half construction and wrap um, your chipboard with cardstock like I normally do. So um, with all that said, I am going to get started on the cover. And I'm just gonna open this and lay it flat since I don't have anything in it right now. And this is gonna be the cover. So I've chosen this paper, which is from the 12 by 12, and I think I gotta, sh yeah, I need to trim it down just a little bit more. Um, and this is gonna be the front. So I think I need to take an eighth of an inch off. Height and width. There we go. And I'm gonna re-ink those two edges. And then I'm gonna add some dimension here. And I'll show you with what in just a second. I think that's going to be, yep, yeah, just right. Okay, so let's go ahead and glue that down. startled me, Nola. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I need, to, I need to edit that out. She was so quiet when she came in. I didn't hear her. And then she was right on top of me. Wow. My heart's still, <laughs> still racing. Okay, so there we go. Oh, that's going to be pretty. So that's our cover. Okay, and then for the back, this is also from the 12 by 12 pack and I think it needs to be trimmed down as well. And then this two and a half inches is all, you know, just split off from the, from the 12 by 12. So let me take off a little bit more on this side. was so jumpy. It's kind of funny. Hopefully I didn't startle you guys. Okay. Okay, and then this is going to go on the spine. It looks like I need to trim a little of this as well. Maybe a little more. And two and a half. Okay. 
Let's see. How did I do? Oh, that looks pretty good to me. What do you guys think? I think so. So let's ink it and get that in. There we go. So there's the cover, the spine, and the back. I think that looks nice. We need to add a little bit more here so it looks a little bit flat. Um, I'm just gonna, I've got a box here that I'm gonna use to help square it off. There we go. Okay, so this came off of this collection. It was over here, so I trimmed it off, fussy cut around it, and I'm gonna overlay it like so. And then this came off the bottom of the 12 by 12. I'm gonna add it right here. And I'm gonna pop this up just a little bit with some chipboard. So we've got some dimension. And I think I've got some chipboard here or somewhere. Yep. I'm just going to draw a rough line around this so I know where to taper. So I know I need to cut this down here, here, and here. Okay. It's not very pretty, but that doesn't matter. Yes, I look awkward because my hand is hurting. Chipboard is not my favorite part of paper projects. Okay, there we go. Looks like I almost got it. Just need to cut a little more off here. There. Okay, let's get some glue on here. So again, this is just fussy cut from the 12 by 12 collection pack. Okay, now I'm gonna go in and fill in these little um, voids just by um, hand cutting uh, in rectangular shape. Just cause it's easy. I usually do rectangles or triangles. narrower. This one will work. Okay. Okay. And then this is the bird wing, so I definitely want to make sure I've got something there. Ow. Now 
should be just about right. A little bit, little bit off this corner. After a while, you can start you can start to see the shapes, and that was almost a parallelogram, almost. Okay, I think I'll put one more piece in here. I think I've got a piece that's going to work just right. So all of these pieces are just act, acting like scaffolds to hold to hold it up off the base. turn it over make sure there's no cardboard showing it looks pretty good now I'm going to set it on here and I'm going to overlap this part of the cactus because it doesn't look right over here and also I'm trying to put more weight over to the right hand side of this overall illustration okay I'm happy I especially like to use chipboard on the back for dimension on the covers because it's so much more rigid than um, your foam. But foam is op obviously an option as well. It's certainly a lot easier to cut. Okay, and I had inked all these edges as well. Now I'm going to add this down here just to sort of bring the ground level up some and I am going to pop him up. Let me see what I've got to work with. Let's turn that over. I think it's gonna fit better that way. Yeah, it does. Okay. Now I've got these these really thin strands here that I wanted to have separate. What I'm gonna do right now is just put some glue on the back of each of them. I'm not gonna put chipboard there, but I'm just gonna put some glue on the back of them and let it dry, and that's gonna stiffen that up a little bit. I'm gonna do the same thing with the tail because it's really too small to um, get chipboard behind, but I kind of wanted that dimension. In the end, I may wind up cutting it off if I have to, but I kind of like the way it, it was showing. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry a little bit while I cut out a couple more pieces. Cover the rest of the back. Okay, good enough. Now let's figure out where it's going to go on here. Oh, I forgot. I need two layers. So I need a second layer past the frog since we're up one here. And I want the frog to... Let's see. It's going to go on this side. There we go. Looks good. Let's do it. Oops. <laughs> Put it on the wrong side. Did I? Yes, I did. 
So this needs to be cut like so. There we go. Okay, I like it. Oops. I'll just hold this in place for a second longer. Make sure you're not hanging off the edge. There we go. I think that looks good. Okay, now I've also fussy cut a couple more flowers out and I am going to pop them with a little bit of chipboard. glue that down until I figure out where this goes. Alright, I might add some more flowers later and add a little more dimension. I was looking for another bird like this to layer um, and I didn't look that hard in the collection, but if there is one, I'll, I'll probably come back and do something there. And his head's sticking out too much, so... I think I'm going to add a layer of chipboard behind his head. An additional layer there. Okay, so there we are. That's a that's part of it, but I'll continue working on it. I'm going to try to find some flowers that angle the other way to to add some more color here. And it'd be nice to, even to find a, a bird in flight to put over here. I'm not sure yet, but there's our Mexico, and then I fussy cut this out. The Sonora. I it looks just a little too cartoonish to use. I wish they would have used um, a different style of font. So originally I thought I would have this as the title for the cover, but I'm not liking it. So I have to think about that some more and I'll be back soon. Okay, so that's it for now. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we're going to work on the inside of Sonora. Sorry, I'm going to remove a few pieces. I was doing some uploading. Get that out of the way. Okay, here we go. So let me share with you. These are from the 12 by 12 collection, and this is from the 12 by 12 collection as well. So you definitely need 12 by 12 to go on the inside liners because the album is 8.5 by 8.5, so the 8 by 8s will not work. And um, I'm going to duplicate the front and back. Now it just so happened this is the way my patterns worked out. So this is six inches across by eight and three eighths, eight and three eighths. So I have two of those. <clears throat> so from one 12 by 12 
<clears throat> you can get in a six, two six inches by eight and three eighths height. <clears throat> Sorry. So I'm gonna do a little planning here and then I did use the um, signature construction tape here. So I want to color block these two panels. So that means I need to put some black construction tape here so that in the gap it'll be black. And I'm just, I'm getting more and more familiar with it. It's, it's, it's nice. Um, and it's, it's a lot easier to work with than wrapping. I mean, you don't have to worry about any cracking um, when you're wrapping your book or on your spine, which is really nice. There we go. And all that's going to be between these two sheets. I'm just going to burnish that down. Okay. Now I'm going to lay this in, and then we'll add this. And that white strip you see, if you weren't part of the beginning of the video, is I actually used the signature tape on top of white um, copy paper to make the whole hinge system because I wanted to see how it held up as the hinge. So from here, uh, up and down, up and down, across each one of the hinges is the signature black construction tape. So it'll be interesting to see how that holds up. It, it's a test. Um, I'm thinking it's gonna do just fine. I've also done the same thing with the um, book binding tape across the hinge. In my opinion, that's the weak point in, in your album. It's carrying all the weight and it also takes on the most motion. So it's going to be the point that fails, if anything fails, right? From moving back and forth and just the weight of the pages on top of it. So I think anything you can do to reinforce that or invest in that part of your book, you should do. So I'm really hopeful. Um, I think this is gonna be a good plan. Now on the back side of this, I attached it to the album the same way I attach all hinges. It's backed by score tape and it's laid onto the album. So there's nothing unique there. I think I have to trim this down to fit. Yeah, it's a little too wide. Um, it's going into my, my hinge area, so I'm going to trim it down just a bit. There we go. Let's see how that is. Seems kind of crooked, but I think it's fine. I'm gonna ink it, lay it down. Okay, now we're gonna repeat that process for the back. Normally I would lay down the smaller piece and then the larger, but because this is over two inches, it's very easy to handle in the trimming. 
So I'm going to lay down the larger piece first, and then we'll trim this to fit. Actually, that's not true. I'm going to do a reference line first and then lay down some tape so that when I do our color blocking, we won't be looking at bare chipboard. There we go. Now we're ready. It's very, not straight, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. We just need a little bit, right, between the two. Now I've mentioned this before, but I'll say it again. The reason I mark the top and the bottom when I'm doing a trim to fit is if for some reason the back is not square and I don't lay this panel down square, this is my opportunity to mask that mistake by trimming this to fit, meaning if for some reason it was off and I trimmed it differently, I could mask that, right? So what I really want, your eye's gonna be drawn to the black line. I can mask a lot of mistakes by pushing them toward the spine. So if I'm off, I want it to be over here, and then I can mask it. So if this is a little bit wider on top than bottom, you're not visually gonna be drawn to that. Your eyes want, are seeking right angles. So that's what we want to give them to the extent we can, okay? But also, there'll be another page here. You'll actually very rarely see the spine. And that's also another good rule of thumb. A good rule to follow is that if you have any Anything you're trying to mask, push it toward the spine, away from the edge. Because your eye is always going to be drawn this way. That's just the nature of looking at a book, any book. You can hide a multitude of sins between these two lines. Okay, I'm going to burnish that in place, and I think we're done... Um, with the front and back, or front and inside liners, and then the next time we get together on this, we're going to install the pages, and we'll be done. And then after that, it'll just be a matter of doing the walkthrough. Thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. I want to thank everybody for taking time to spend with us here at Scrap and Create. We appreciate it. Please like, share, and subscribe, and share any feedback that you have on how I'm teaching or the paper that we're using, we definitely want to hear it. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Hey everyone, it's Daphne and we are going to finish up on the cover. So we've got the inside, the outside all finished. We're just ready to insert the pages. So let's go ahead and do that. So I just verified that I have them in the right order. 
and it's actually opposite order. So this is page one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, page eight. Seems like it's very dark in here today. Same lighting. Oh. I have to turn it so I can see better. that I'm actually on the hinge. Yes, I am. Okay, so as usual, we want to lay down the page, pushing toward the spine, and just verify that we have um, an equal uh, width around, and that the page is going in straight. And it looks good. You know, a, a, a pick tool is, is really sort of an essential tool, but one of the things I don't like about this one, and I'd love to hear some feedback from you guys if you have one you like, is that when I go to pull out, this hump on the tool gets stuck on the next hinge, and it just it's really annoying. So it would be nice if it was just a smooth shaft. See how it's getting stuck right there? And that's that's a problem. figure out how to get it pulled back out. There we go, that was weird. Okay, now I've messed around with it so much I've got to push it back down. So see how this was just flattening everything for me? That, that would be ideal as if my pick tool was flat. I'm just lifting it again to make sure that it's going down as far as it can. And remaining somewhat straight. Yep, there we go, sorry about that. That was wicked, normally it's not that bad. Now you can see how it's drifted down on this side. So I am going to, I'm not gonna put down this, um, the second side, I'm gonna straighten that out. So I'm only going to leave one side down, but I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of the pages um, uh, offline, but that's the general process. I also have lots of videos that show you how to do this, so I'm not going to go through all because I want to straighten that out before I add the rest of the pages because they're going to start to get in my way. So that's it for now. Uh, the next time we all get together, it, uh, we'll be doing the walkthrough, and I'll be sure to point out any um, inserts or embellishments that I've added from to the book uh, since we were on any particular page. Okay, and with the measurements as well. Okay, talk to you guys soon.